never teach all you want, everything we want. Speak up. Speak up respectfully to say, no, 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 no. Please, please don't. Please don't. But, but it is seen. It is seen in the life of Jesus. In, in the book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 40 to, to, to 42. It says a man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus was indignant, meaning the man's condition. And he reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him and he was clean. The parallel account in the book of Luke. Remember Luke was a physician. So on matters of, of, that involves medical, in the medical arena, Luke is much more detailed. And Luke described the same man that he was covered covered with leprosy. Not just that he had a little leprosy. He was covered head to toe as white as a leper, covered. And what Jesus did, Jesus touched him. And these mothers, Mark 10 and 16 said, look at what Jesus did. He, he was gathering, he was, he, he gathering the children up in his arms. He laid hands on them to bless them. But you see, when we examine, we examine the, the Greek text. The Greek text is, is very, very informative on, in, in two aspects of when it used the word blessed. And so as not to choke you with all the Greek. I'll give you the, just the outcome of it. But, but firstly, there is, in the construction of the text, there is an emphasis, is an emphatic. The bless is emphasized. And, and the Greek New Testament will, will, will say that Jesus blessed them fervently. It was in no routine way. It was in no hasty way. He blessed them fervently. of these children. It's like perhaps it is like your parents gone away. Parents that you really, really love and you're really close to them. They went away for one month and they arrive. Think of the embrace of that child and the parent. You talk about a bear hug. You know what a bear hug means? He did so fervently. No ordinary that he's gathering them up in his arm. He's, he's 
fervent. He did it with enthusiasm. And secondly, the tense indicates that Jesus was taking each child in his arm one by one. One by one. He didn't deal with them as a group of children. It was one by one. The master, the rabbi, had enough time to deal with the children individually. So in a, in, a, in a translation, one translation, William Hendrickson suggests that the verse should be translated. And having taken them in his arms, he tenderly blessed them one by one, laying hands upon them. I think it was last year, I was in Grenada and uh, I was at really the largest parish church in Grenada. This building will sit in it a few times. And at the end of the sermon, I made an altar call and when I look, it was like the whole church came to the altar, spread out in three lines. And I'm saying, my God, how do I deal with, with, with this group? Do I just make one sweet prayer for the whole of them there? I didn't feel that led. Well, each one of these, I supposed to deal with them in order. So I know time was the essence. So I called the pastor. I said, pastor, you got to help me. Take, take row one. I start row two. But it's the idea. The idea I was, I want to say, is that Jesus was not hurried. Jesus spent all the time with these children as it were. Blessing these children. He took them up in his arms. One each child was not a part of a group, but an individual, one by one. He blessed them fervently again and again and again. And that's the picture that I want us to get about Jesus and the power of touch. He did so. was the pattern of the way Hebrew people, a Hebrew father, will bless their children, each child, to bless them. But you see, um, my brother, I am going beyond, beyond, beyond what it means to us as a Pentecostal. For, for that's a rich meaning that when we lay hands, it means that I am transferring in you what is inside of me. But also, it conveys also that you are accepted. You loved by me. You special. You special. See, there is power in touch. There is power in touch. We were born, we were created with the, with the need to touch. It's a need. We, we, if we don't get it, 
it means that part of us will starve. We, we, we have that. And listen, the research, the research is showing that, you know. So one Dr. Rennie Spitz, a New York psycho, psychoanalyst, spent three months observing the reaction of babies in an orphanage where the nursing staff was so busy that each child could only get one-tenth of the attention a mother will give to a child. And Dr. Rene Spitz found that approximately 30% of the babies died before they were one year old. And he made a startling revelation. He said, emotional starvation is as dangerous as physical starvation. Because we have a capacity. We have a desire. If we, do, if we don't get it, we will starve emotionally. So fathers, the fathers them here, fathers, your children or child has an innate desire for your touch. Meaningful touch are talking about now. A deep desire for you to lay hands on them, to hug them, to kiss them, to say, like Isaac, come close to me. When a child is starved of that, they will get it somewhere else. They will not be able to interpret the touch of other men because they are so hungry for it. It's the power. Touch is a powerful means of communication. Powerful means. And all the people, the people who are married, the women are coming on your cases, women. Women, women. Well, the men them say amen there. You not say nothing now. Or you <laughs> you're frightened now, I can set you up, eh? <laughs> oh my Jesus. It's your desire for touch. Your desire to be held, to be, to be hugged, to be caressed, to be whatever. I have that need. It's a powerful way of communication. And listen, listen, we bless our children by our touch. Because there must be a consistency with the way we touch them. And the intent of our hearts. And listen, the research, the research are astonishing on the power of touch. Listen, research show that when there is, when there is greater physical affection during childhood, the rate of adult physical violence are lower. Perhaps that's the answer to the problems, the violence that our young men in St. Vincent's are having. How much, 
how many of these young men have people in their lives to touch them meaningfully? I'm not even going to say, you know, the whole generalization thing to say, oh, there are no fathers. But there are substitutes. Amen? The church believe in redemption. When, there are, when, the, when the ideal is not there, all is not lost. So you're not banished if your father walked out. You're not banished. That's what the church is for. That's what big brothers are for in the church of Jesus Christ. That's what grandparents are for. They could be stable substitutes. All that lasts. Don't feel yourself victimized that all is gone. No way. No research supports such, such conclusion. And the research show that on the other hand, when touch is limited, physical and verbal abuse are higher. My God, in this country, how, how we quick and we mouth to abuse one another. Guys, how are we so abusive with our mouths in St. Vincent? Am I lying on, on us, Vincent Jones? My God, we is. We, we are, we, we are, rub us, rub us, rub us, rub us, us, those of us right in church today, rub us hard, just rub us hard, and you will hear the venom that come from us. But what Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if we are aggressive with our mouths, we have heartical issues. Man, we, listen to me, man. We're too abusive. Listen, we have abuse from pulpits. We have abuse in churches. We have abuse in homes, in schools. I hear some things that some teachers tell children. Listen, if I had the power, I banish you as a teacher. Meaningful touch. Lives strive on it. You give children a sense of security when you are able. To be able to hold them. They grow up feeling secure. Not able to be moved when they go outside. The security is what they need. And we convey it with what? With our touch. You realize that our skin. Our skin is our biggest organ. And all that nerve ending that God Almighty put in our skin and more so our hands is for the purpose of touch. Jesus grabbed them up in his arms and again and again blessed them with his good breath and life. I want that to sink in. I want us just to get it. We will talk about the other aspects of the blessing. But the, if we want our children to be blessed, that's what we are saying. You can't use words only and there is no demonstration of your acceptance of them. Through my son, come close to me. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta shift ourselves from that to say, you know, because a poor can't do that. No, no. Uh -uh. I know some real, real, real poor people. And oh, 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 they love their own. How they love their children. How they treat them. Mm -mm. All of us owe that to our 
to our children. Mothers, fathers, grandparents. All of us have a part to play in this. Jesus said, let the children come. Let the children come. And whether it be in our churches or in our homes, our homes must be prepared for the children. So, you, you, know, you, know, you know why I insisted that we were not going to remove them children from downstairs and carry them upstairs if upstairs not air condition. Because there's a message. There's a message. Oh, you guys down here, cool, 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 cool. And we up there, hot, 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 hot. Mm -hmm. Message we send in, message, message. It's a place for the children. Are we making room for them, for the children? What about in the homes? Most of home, lots of homes I go in with young children, those homes are not, ch not child friendly. Because you still beat the child for, because the child pulled down your vase or your vase or your whatever. Or you pulled down all your nice decorations. When you have children, are you making place for them? And they're curious when they pull down things. So while they grow, why don't you just put those things away? And in fact, why you buy them? You know you're going to have children anyway. Make room. That's what, that's what Jesus was telling the disciples. Why are you rebuking these mothers? Why are you preventing the children from coming to me? Make room. Because you're sending message of how important they are. And if you are important, I am able to adjust my whole life. I am able to adjust the whole environment in the home to facilitate you. I'm taking out some of the center table that you have there, the big thing they're taking up space. Take them there out. Create room for a rambunctious toddler who wants space to develop. Make room. Make room. Some of us are so gripped by public opinion. We so, we so gripped by the neighbor will come and say, oh God, watch how they had a house. Well, why don't you tell them to mind their own business? Why don't you go take care of your own house? Why are you trying to come run mine? We're so driven by public opinion and not driven by the needs of the child. It is a child who ought to determine what the environment of this home will be. Jesus. In a fervent manner. Again and again and again. He blessed the children. Meaningful touch. If we get that. Then we could erase. Lots of the things that. You know two weeks ago. The parliament revised the criminal code. And they have some hefty, hefty jail sentence on people who cross the line with minors. If we get this, there is no need for that. Meaningful, meaningful touch. We all need it. You could be a gray old person. can't send your grandparents to a home and never show up. Yes, we work. We work and we know that a whole lot of us going to go to homes. I know that. I don't know that. People work. But you can 
can take we land, and take we house, and send us over to this home, and every day we sit in a rocking chair, waiting for you. We expect you still come and shave we, and comb we hair. You understand what I'm saying? And bring grandchildren, grandchildren, jump up and, and grandfather and kiss him there and kiss him there. And say, Grandpa, how you doing today? How I miss you and all of that. Come here, Grandpa. Even the, as old as you are, you need the touch because we were born with it and we will go to our graves with it. those children. Let us pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God, we release your truth. For ye shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. I pray, Father, that the entrance of your word will give light, oh God, will expel cultural darkness and ignorance, oh God, and will bring us to a new level in Christ Jesus. We praise you, oh God. We praise your holy name. We give you praise. For your goodness, oh God. God, give us the capacity to bless our children with meaningful touch. Oh God, as we lay hands on them or we kiss them or we hug them, God, may there be a release of what is inside of us upon them. Praise you, oh God, for your goodness. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless. gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Amen.
upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his presence go before behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen, amen. upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 
grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, all that you have deposited in us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, oh God, when you touch us, we will be able to touch them in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you now, God. Thank you for blessings upon us and to all who would be under our care in Jesus name Amen you can sit just for a little and we will have our announcements At Deaconess Joanna Combach Residence this afternoon and not at Plato's Residence. Tomorrow, Boys Club will be held at the Community Center at 4.30 p.m. There will be no missionettes tomorrow. Women's Ministries will meet tomorrow at 7 p.m.
commonly challenged as we continue on this path to fulfilling the Great Commission. Learn how to reposition for the founder's vision. All women are asked to take note. Wednesday School of Prayer and Christian Enrichment will be held at 7 p.m. On Friday, the youths will meet at church at 6.30 p.m. Please note that this year's Students' Recognition Day will be held on Sunday, April 28, 2024. Students are asked to wear their school uniforms to church. This service will be brought live on NDC Radio 75 at 9 a.m. So you are asked to be seated at 8.45 a.m. Howie SVD District Women's Ministries Department will be hosting a conference under the theme, The Empowered Woman. This conference will be held on Saturday, May 18, 2024 at the Peace Memorial Hall from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. The guest speaker will be our own sister, Maureen Williams. The cost is $75 per person. All women, you are asked to be a part of this conference. Please be reminded to bring along your special offering to go towards 2020 vision next Sunday, April 21st, 2024. Howie, SVD District will be conducting a survey on district convocation to solicit feedback on how they can improve the convocation. The survey will be posted on our church's WhatsApp group. Hard copies will be made available upon request. It is to be submitted by April 28, 2024. Deacon Lance of Constance would like to meet with all men for a short while just after the service. These are all the announcements.